Falkas lay in his hammock, swaying with the ship as waves lapped the sea ghost's hull. It was rhythmic, a lullaby to carry him off to sleep, a rest well earned considering the day he had. But sleep didn't come. His heart, well, his new heart was beating much too fast. Whatever rhythm the night offered was drowned out by the beating of that golden drum. Thump, thump, thump. Falcus tried to drown it out, to focus on the nostalgic sounds of men snoring and creaking floorboards. It was no use. The pounding was louder now. Thump, thump, thump. He began to sweat, despite the night's cool air. He closed his eyes, trying to still his beating heart. But again, it was no use. Instead, he was overcome with a sensation, one he wished he didn't know. Bloodlust. He felt this way back on the Emperor, too. Seeing the spawn of Hextor, the sight and smell of his own blood mixing with others in that flooded cargo hold, like some sort of vile stew. He wanted to stay down there, to rip everything in sight limb from limb, to trace a knife over flesh and feel it squirm. He wanted to... Falkas, Falkas, you awake? A voice pulled him from his thoughts of blood and pleasure. Falkas opened his eyes to see Tom, Will's father, and one of the only Marines to survive the slaughter on Sanctuary. Honestly, Falkas hadn't spared much thought for them since the battle. He allowed himself to feel a bit of shame for that. Falkas sat up, rubbing his eyes. Yeah, despite my best efforts. The two spoke in whispered tones, defeat accompanying his own. Tom chuckled. Really? I figured you'd be dead tired after the day you had. A simple pickup turned into a kraken attack. Must have been quite the spectacle. Falkas grinned in spite of himself. Yeah, that's one way to put it. Did you need something, Tom? Tom held up a bottle of rum in reply, nodding his head toward the stairs. Again, Falkas chuckled. Fuck it. I could use a drink right now hopping down from his hammock to join Tom above deck. The two put their backs against the deck's railing, opening the bottle and taking turns sipping. Tom was the first to break the silence, passing the bottle to Falkus. You never did explain what exactly happened on that boat. Was it bad? Falkus sipped the rum, feeling it hit his stomach like a sack of bricks. He realized he hadn't eaten since he got back. Hopefully this was the only bottle Tom had, because if not, Falkus was going to have one hell of a hangover in the morning. He handed the bottle back to Tom before replying, You're right, I didn't. And yeah, it was bad. How bad? Tom asked. I almost died. But honestly, that seems to happen a lot with me nowadays, so looking back, it wasn't anything out of the ordinary. Falkas trailed off into a bitter laugh, holding out his hand for the rum. Tom, who had foregone his drink, handed it to Falkas, eyes wide. You almost died? What happened? Now Falkas remembered the cargo hold, the cold salt water flooding his boots and stinging his wounds, the ghouls that surrounded him, Mia dropping down to help him. He remembered the ceiling falling on top of him, with the scent of burnt flesh following close behind. He placed a palm over where the debris had pierced him, a sobering reminder of just how strong Kit really was. He held no hate for her, of course. Honestly, if the roles were reversed, he would have done the same thing. What she did may have turned the fight in their favor. If anything, he was more angry at himself. In his younger years, he would have been able to dodge out of the way with ease. But Grey dappled his hair now, and stiffness had worked its way into his bones. What was it the captain always said? War is a young man's game. Only now did Falkus understand what he meant. Falkus? Tom's words cut their way into Falkus's mind once again. Falkus cleared his throat. I just bit off more than I could chew, that's all. 
He took another swig of rum, not bothering to pass it back to Tom, though the old Marine seemed to have lost interest in the drink, which suited Falkus just fine. Still, though, you seem so calm about it. About dying, I mean. Tom turned from Falkus to face the night sky. Falkus shrugged. I kill things for a living, Tom. Whether that be people, monsters, devils, whatever. It only stands to reason that one day, one of those things will be able to kill me first. I go into every fight knowing it could be my last. And when it isn't, I move on to the next one. Death is part of the job. Whether it's mine or someone else's, it doesn't matter. I see. Tom's voice was quiet as he stared up at the starry sky. Falkus could imagine what he was thinking about. You're thinking about your friends, aren't you? Falkus asked. Tom nodded slowly. We were playing cards before everything went down. We were laughing, drinking, smoking, alive. And then... Tom looked down, shaking his head as he rubbed his face with his hand. And then they were gone. Falkos knew better than to say anything. He's been there. He knew just how little words helped. If anything, they made you feel worse. But it's just like you said, Falkos. It's all part of the job, right? A bitter smile grew on Tom's face. It is, but it doesn't make it any easier. Falkers passed the rum back to Tom, who drank it greedily, finishing off the bottle. Tom turned it face down, and when nothing else came out, tossed the bottle across the deck. And yet you make it seem just that, Tom said, the rum adding a bit of venom to his voice. Facing your own death is easy, that's true. But facing the deaths of others, bearing them, that's what's hard. It's easy to die for a cause, Tom. So easy that people do it without even realizing. It's harder to live for one, though, to bear the weight of the dead, and to continue living for their sake. Falkus's tone was low and hushed, in danger of being carried off by the sea winds. Tom looked at Falkus, tears in his eyes, the alcohol not doing him any favors. How do you do it, then? Do what? Falkus asked. Keep going. How do you keep on living? I asked Eliander about you. I know what happened between you and Hayes. Falcus kept his gaze forward, remembering the boars. How many nights were spent like this? How many drinks and laughs did they share? He took a deep breath. Honestly, I don't know. Sometimes, sometimes it's too much, you know. But then I remember the people that still need me, need me to keep it together. That helps, I think, to have a goal. And your goal? Tom began to wipe the tears from his eyes. Falkers nodded his head down below deck where the rest of the party was sleeping. To protect them, I guess. I owe them my life and much more. They showed me kindness when I had no right to it. The same can be said for their trust. They're good people, kind people, and they deserve those things in return. I can't give that to them. I don't have any of it left in me. But I can make sure they live long enough to find it. To make it out of this mess in one piece. Tom let out a chuckle. The levity was a welcomed reprieve. Yeah, this job's turning out to be a lot more than we bargained for, huh? Falkas gave him a fake smile. Of course, the dangers of this job weren't out of his mind, but he was more concerned about the forces that loomed in the shadows. The Scarlet Brotherhood. They were something he'd make up in his head as a youth, dreaming tales of grand heroes and villains. But unlike those fantastic tales, they were real, and they were coming for them. Tom rose to his feet, offering a hand to Falkas. Well, I'm not much of a teacher, but I could show you a thing or two that might be of some use. Falkas smiled, genuinely this time, 
taking Tom's hand and rising to meet him. Yeah, that sounds good. The two found some dull blades and began to spar. The clashing of metal bounced off of the rolling waves, laughter chasing closely behind, the sound of peace. Peace would last only a few moments, as the air would bleed crimson and Falkus's world would be turned onto its head once again.